What's up, everybody? This is Alex Christopher from the Duran, and I'm here with Peter Lavelle, host of RT's Crosstalk. And today we're going to be talking about Trump's 180 on Syria. All right, Peter, so um, there's a lot of articles and a lot of talk saying that Trump is now committed to the war in Syria. In other words, um, Assad must go <laughs> again. Regime change, right. Okay, regime change, Assad must go. Uh, what do you take um, about all these articles coming out recently saying that uh, Trump is now back uh, reengaged with Syria? Okay. Well, it all started earlier in the week with David Ignatius's article in the Washington Post, the Bezos propaganda uh, organ. And um, basically, he's acting like a reporter, but he's actually just a functionary for the deep state, meaning here's the official line. Now, we want you to say it was journalism. He talked to a high uh, government official. Uh, I guess we should, uh, it's fair to assume that it was John Bolton, maybe it was Pompeo. But basically, um, the U.S. Uh, with its uh, uh, regional allies are, are going to stir, up, continue stirring up uh, Syria into a quagmire until we get what we want. I'm paraphrasing, but quagmire until we get what we want. I think it's reasonable to assume that at the Helsinki uh, summit, Putin and Trump came to some kind of understanding. And um, what did I say after this? Would, would uh, Putin be able to Trump any, would Putin be able to trust anything Trump said? Well, I guess we found out, no, okay. And it was patently obvious with the Q&A because there's the American Civil War going on. And this has everything to do with it. The, uh, the, 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 the <laughs> I'm, I have to laugh that the, the latest in the Skripal affair, I guess we just got demonetized, um, this at anonymous letter uh, to uh, uh, the New York Times, uh, 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 Mueller's uh, investigation, obviously, uh, the David Ignatius's tip that uh, uh, Trump has got the administration gun 180. All of these are happening at the same time. It's no coincidence that Theresa May came out with this. Okay, I mean, it, did you notice that the United Nations Security Council back to back debates uh, Novichok and Syria back to back? How many people have noticed that? That's no coincidence. It's building up a coalition. It's building up momentum. This is a uh, tried and tested thing. Go back to 2002, the path to war. J Ladies and gentlemen, we are on the path, okay? We are at DEFCON 2, okay, in rapidly moving, to, and this is to, to one, and that, this is not hyperbole, all right? Now, we just had today, um, we had uh, Rouhani, uh, Erdogan, and Putin speaking in Tehran, just finished a few hours ago. I haven't parsed the entire thing yet. They are more or less on the same page. Um, they're, using, they're, they're talking about Idlib, and this is really what it's all about, the last terrorist stronghold, and terrorist it is, uh, in Syria. And um, the Syrian government has made clear, uh, uh, obviously Iran is backing this, and Russia in its own way is also doing this, giving uh, air support, that this last veg, uh, vestige of uh, terrorists um, uh, groups must go. And I think if I'm, the, uh, if I'm quoting correctly, um, the Revolutionary Guard, um, a chief of Iran said, we have to uh, uh, clean this up finally. Okay. So, um, and now you, ha and now with the McCain funeral, with this kind of war criminal group grope, it was really, it was bizarre. It was, it was uh, Orwellian watching it, praising empire and endless war. And um, with essentially what I think is happening is that the deep state is putting down a marker because uh, they're going to force, if they can't get rid of him yet, they're going to start forcing him in policy and they're doing it. They are succeeding. Trump probably thinks, number one, and, and I'm serious, he's probably thinking in his mind, during the campaign, he promised not to start any new wars. Well, he's not starting new, and he's just continuing them. So in his mind, he's not starting something new. And we both know that he's he's out on uh, the stump uh, nonstop right now. He's fighting for his political life. If the Democrats take the House, he's toast, and he knows it. Or at the very, very least, there will be absolute political paralysis, and the deep state will be running It'll be their shop all over again, and they're pushing it right now. Why now? Because they can. They want to prove a point. And, they're, and, they, and I, I call it the McCain-Brennan pathology. You know, we're, look, in their minds, 
Syria is the first attempted regime change since the end of the Cold War that did not succeed. They have something to prove. They have something to prove. Obama wouldn't do it. Trump wouldn't do it. Now it's up to them as quote unquote patriots and patriots for the globalists to finish the job. The results are catastrophic. I mean, the, 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 this is a point where who's going who's gonna to blink first? The, the, uh, 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 Tehran has made it very clear. Damascus will not fall. That government will not fall. And of course, the Israelis are there prodding everyone on. They want the quagmire. The more quagmire in Syria, it is the better for them. All right. Turkey, they're the ones may blink first here. Because they have been aiding a lot of these groups that are nasty, you know, 31 flavors of jihad here. Turkey's going to have to reassess how much of their gains, quote unquote, illegal occupation of northern Syria, are they, uh, can they keep? All right. And, and so the, the, uh, this five-dimensional chess game continues. And one miscalculation is very dangerous, Alex. Trump's oh, only way out. And we have to talk about the Chinese, okay? We'll, right. Another question. And we have to talk the about the Chinese, and so we'll get to that. So we'll tackle the Chinese after, after, after this, uh, this statement that I'm going to make, and I want you to, to let me know what you think. Trump's only way out out of the aggressive domestic uh, onslaught of, of criticism and bad press that he's getting. I mean, the, the attacks are relentless against him, and they've been ramping up. The only way for him to get out of this or to buy some sort of relief or time is to attack Syria. And he know, and he knows it. it, will, it they'll, they'll circle the wagons around him. Now, the the, the liberals they, they, and these globalists—they're the worst type of people you could ever possibly meet. Of course, they want this to happen. But if it goes wrong, Trump did it. See, it's a perfect world for them. They're never held responsible for any of this. He made the decision to go in. So, I mean, this is the cynicism of all of this. And they definitely want him to go in. And Trump, we don't know what's going on in the Oval Office. Apparently, everybody else in the in the in the West Wing knows. We don't. Um, I, I think he's he's buckling under uh, these neocons and, and the media. Uh, the you know the New York Times, the Washington Post. They want war, 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 and more war. CNN, the echo chamber, MSNBC. So it's it's a lose lose all the way around. It's well, it's horrific. He, and then he let the neocons in with John Bolton, did he not? I'm sorry? He let the neocons in with John Bolton, did he not? Yeah, because he was watching too much Tucker Carlson. Okay, that's how, that's, I'm serious. That's how he got on. John Bolton was on Fox News, and he said, I like that guy. I like what he has to say. And, you know, I, my reviewing the biography, the bureaucratic history of John Bolton, he's a, he doesn't have scruples. He has no scruples at all. In my fact, I think he's kind of proud of it. Um, the number of things that I've heard that he's done. Uh, he will. He is relentless, and he, like everybody else around him, didn't. Oh, and also, any attempt at having better relations with Russia is definitely a dead letter. Awesome. Dead, yeah. dead. Okay, dead. Yeah. So, so you mentioned China, um, and yeah. we did a video on China with Alexander Mercurius a couple of days ago, and it's, this is actually tied into it. So, yeah. what, what's the information that you have regarding well, that video that we did and China with regards to? You Syria? guys did a great. You guys did a great video. No, the Uyghurs are not in prison in China. They're fighting in Syria, okay? The, there's estimate, yeah, there's yeah. estimates of 10 to 20,000 of them. Unbelievable. Uyghurs, okay? Um, the the uh, descriptions, reports on them, uh, they, are, they would make uh, elements of al-Nusra and al-Qaeda uh, blush. Uh, these are really, really horrific characters, okay? And... Uh, China doesn't want to, to come back ever. And, and, and this is what, look, this is the, the, the same kind of uh, Brzezinski all the way to Bolton playbook. They have this jihadist group uh, that they can turn up and turn down, move them here, move them there. They can never, ever get rid of them when they want to. That's the big problems with these folks. Okay, But, I mean, don't you think that there's somebody... Uh, uh, on the National Security Council working for Bolton thinking, well, we can use them in Syria, but maybe even in China Jeez. later. Jeez, that yeah. is sinister. Yeah, think that about it. Sinister. Think about it. Think about it. And the Chinese, they, get it, they might have to put a marker down right now because if these guys with fighting with Al-Qaeda, with the United States and its allies in Israel, Saudi Arabia, 
I mean, these guys have a, 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 a treasure show, uh, source. They can be funded. They can be taken care of. And the Chinese do not want these guys back. And, and, if, and if, they, if they do survive in one form or another, they will get back and they will be somebody else's tool. Chinese, for the first time, I think, uh, since the new China, um, may hey, say to Assad, you know, we're going to send some battal air, uh, air battalions. Uh, we're going to put some skin in the game. Now that skin, that kind of skin is gonna it's gonna make the hair stand up on a lot of people's backs because the U.S. and China in a proxy military conflict in Syria as they continue down the path of these very hard trade negotiations. We still have the North Korea situation involved. I mean, this gets so amazingly complicated for imperial. American hubris <laughs> for all of all that stuff I just mentioned. It, and, it, and it is a freight train out of control, folks. There's no, there's no, there's no hold on. No one's breaking it. They're, they're, they're accelerating this. And this is, again, I was a trained historian. This is August 1914 all over again. All right. Because why did that conflict start? The First World War? Pride hubris not rational thinking and and this is what we have right now the the uh after everything that iran russia uh and hezbollah have done they are at the the finishing the finish line the, the winning line is in their grasp it's almost over and just at this moment we have a 180 degree turn and you have the neocons doing this. It's like, finally, we're going to get another crack at this. And the, the commander in chief is asleep at the wheel. Woo! Let's go. It's, it's, right. it's, it's, it's insanity. It's, it's insanity. insanity. All right. So, so to close out the segment, Peter, um, what do you think? How do you think this is going to play out? Do you think, number one, there is going to be a false flag chemical weapons attack, which everyone in the deep state is is pretty much hinting at it's going to happen yeah. and if it does happen how do you think trump is going to handle it this time or his or his uh, his team his cabinet around him mattis and all these guys are they going to do another strike like they did last time you know uh, a meaningless I, missile strike or will they yeah. take it you know to, I, to I, a real I, conflict i i think that we could see a skirmish uh, um it's going to be it's going to be kind of a, a preamble to a game of chicken. I think if there, well, it's not if, it's when this false flag chemical attack is going to happen. Um, will they send off a few missiles at empty warehouses right. again and see, it, will they going to intercept them? But I think, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but the Syrian Air Force and the Russian Air Force, they're actually synchronized. The Russians have done this. So r the Russians can see anything moving above Syrian airspace. And... What they've done is the signature, the electronic signature on, on, on Syrian planes are Russian. Mm -hmm. So for the Americans, when they see the uh, object, objects above uh, in uh, Syrian airspace that aren't theirs, all they see is Russian. So it may, it may be Syrian. And that's a pretty horrific thought, don't you think? I mean, is somebody to say, you know, attack. See, this is this is. I remember, you know, when there was that when Trump did his second missile strike, and we were all on eggshells. I'm that is kids' play compared to where we are now, because his enti the entire machinery is moving in the direction of war. And unlike in 2003, where there was some kind of anti-war movement, everybody is you know stormy, stormy, stormy. Russia, Russia, Russia. You know, Novichok, Novichok, Novichok. Nobody, they, they've taken their eyes off the ball, but that's all intentional. So I think we could, you know, we could see something happen. And I, I, and I, and if it does, I hope everyone steps back and say, whoa, this could get out of control. This could get out of control. The best thing that would happen, rationally speaking, what should happen, what I would like to happen is that, you know, all the players actually have a genuine concern for the civilian population of Idlib. Now, let's get these fighters, terrorists out, okay? The United Nations estimates 10 to 20,000. Get them out. And then 
decide what you're going to do next, okay? But the U.S. has made it ad adamant that it's not going to leave Syria. It's staying. Under international law, it's illegal. They're violating the sovereignty uh, of Syria. So I think it could take a, a, a precedent where we get right to the to uh, moving into the abyss where they're going to say, OK, the, the Syrians and the Russians, the, the Iranians, the Chinese, they're serious about this and it might be a brick wall. But see, you have to understand is that uh, Assad can't stop. You know, he can't compromise. He makes a compromise on Idlib. He's compromising everything. And, and, and you have the, the Iranians want, uh, are, are pushing for him to do this. I mean, the Iranians are bankrolling a lot of this. It's expensive. Their economy is hurting, okay? Russia doesn't want to bankroll this forever for everyone. Russia wants to take over Syria. Russia doesn't want to take over Syria, folks. It doesn't want a black flag over Damascus. It's a 24-hour drive from Damascus to Grozny, Chechnya. Let that sink in, all right? And the Chinese don't want these Uyghurs coming back after they, you know, and uh, tried and tested terrorists looking for paymasters, and they have no love for the Chinese, obviously. I mean, they're not even Chinese. They're a Turkic people, okay? And they're Sunni, and, uh, uh, and they've been uh, radicalized by these Wahhabi types, okay? So kind of, you know, there's some total. This is a concoction that is so toxic and if there aren't uh, cool heads looking at this soberly, we're looking for a major, major car wreck. And I'm not underestimating this. Let's, let's, let's hope, I guess, because I do agree that the chemical weapons strike is going to happen. Let's just hope, hope that it's another. Hope, hope dies last. Right? Yeah, hope <laughs> dies last. Let's just hope that once again, Trump does, like you said, uh, a symbolic missile strike. And, you know, he feeds the red meat to all the all, all the warmongers for a couple of days. Brian Williams, you know, Beautiful uh, yeah, missiles. He, he comes in his pants after he sees the missiles and, and Farid, what's his name on CNN, whatever. He's presidential now and everyone, you know, gets their red meat for a couple of weeks before they go back to the stormy Daniel stuff <laughs> again. Well, yeah. and, and again, I, and we'll be talking about this a lot, and I think maybe it would be a good idea if we uh, did with Alexander McKiris on the midterms election. I do a, a live talking about it, looking at news feeds, and because um, if it tips, it's kind of another two really stormy years, okay? Yeah. Not the fake stormy, a real storm. It won't end. It won't end. I think either way, it won't end. Hey, Peter Lavelle, host of RT's Crosstalk. Thank you very much for discussing Trump's 180 on Syria. Guys, if you like this video, click on the subscribe button down below and click on that notifications bell to get notifications every time we push out a new video. And please go to the Durant shop, pick up a t-shirt or donate to our PayPal page. We yeah, because we're we're probably going to be demonetized. Yeah. So yeah. Come on, folks, pick up a t-shirt. Syria <laughs> videos are, are demonetized like the second they go up and you don't really have any recourse at all. So guys, uh, pick up a t-shirt, send us a donation. That will really help us to keep broadcasting videos like this to you. Peter Lavelle, host of RT's Crosstalk. Thank you very much. Until next time, take care.